Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Dark by James Herbert. So as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... It came like a malignant shadow, numbing people's minds with icy tendrils of blackness and seductively whispered promises of infinite power. And somewhere in the night, a small girl watched, smiling as her mother burned. The inmates of an asylum slaughtered their attendants. The slimy tunnels of the London sewer system echoed with the dragging footsteps of creatures that had once been human, but were now gathering to make war on mankind. Madness raged all over the city as the lights began to dim, fade and go out, and humanity was attacked by an ancient, unstoppable evil. So, tabby tab tabs. So right at the beginning, somebody uh, buys a house and we get a reference to the 10% required uh, as a deposit for the property. So for my house, which I'm finally now in, I had to put close to like nearly 30% down. And there's a lot of strange stuff happening on this road and we get, um, I expect they're a bit worried, Les. Worried? Murder, manslaughter, bloody house burning down all in one night. It'll be another hundred years before anything else happens down this road, mate. They've had their lot all in one night. You can't blame them though. I mean, it's not Coronation Street, is it? So for American viewers, Coronation Street is a British soap opera where all kinds of mad stuff happens. And um, so here we get a little bit of the madness that's going on. So we get, did you get a chance to see today's newspaper? She asked. I read the headline, glanced at the story. More madness in Horror Road. I'm surprised the Residents Association doesn't take it up. Please, Mr. Bishop. Chris. Please, the situation is more serious than you think. Okay, I shouldn't be flippant. I agree, a man cutting his sleeping wife's throat with an electric hedge trimmer, then cutting the legs off his dog isn't a joke. Running out of cable before he could attack two policemen outside is mildly funny though. And um, the madness continues here, so we get a guy, um, the man who shot the two boys and their father, but he didn't die. He did last night. My father and I went to the police station where he was being held. We hoped to be allowed to question him. He was dead when we arrived. He was left alone in a cell and he cracked his skull open against the wall. He ran at it, Mr. Bishop, from one end to the other, a matter of only eight feet, but enough to split open his head. They said he must have ran at the wall twice to cause such damage. Bishop winced at the thought. Well, yeah, it doesn't sound very pleasant, does it? I'm coming back out, Biggie. And then we get somebody who's having sex with an old man, basically. She kind of secretly wants to kill him. She's supposed to be his carer. But again, this evil is sort of pervading everything and it's affecting the way that people act. And we get this great line. So uh, his words were cut off as she spread her legs and tried to pull him into her. She had to stuff his flaccid organ in with her fingers and it was like dough being forced into an open purse. And someone says, because um, he's a, like a paranormal investigator, but he doesn't really believe in the paranormal. He's kind of looking to find the natural um, solutions to what's going on, you know? And he says, it's like UFOs. It's just a matter of time before we find the explanation for them. And uh, Asimov, Isaac Asimov, in one of his uh, non-fiction books, he was talking about UFOs. And he was saying like, have you ever noticed it's only the nutters who find explanations for UFOs? Like, you know, scientists are willing to leave them as unidentified. Like, that's fine. We'll eventually figure out what they are at a later date, you know? And we get, um, basically a rape happens and we get in the street. Yes, sir, in the street. No attempt to drag the victim off into cover, but that's not the worst of it. Surprise me. The victim was a man and then they're very surprised about it. Basically, you got raped by some women who were again under the influence of the darkness or whatever. I don't know why the gender should make any difference personally, but... And then we get an event that happens at uh, a football stadium. So I'm just gonna read out this little paragraph here. Well, it's two paragraphs. It was crazy. Everything that was happening was crazy. The madness was growing, a virulence that was spreading like an ancient, uncontrolled plague. An exaggeration. The suicides at Beechwood had been the beginning. Then the insanity that developed a year later, a madness that had soon enveloped most of those living in Willow Road, an attempted murder on himself and Jacob Kulak, the slaying of Agnes Kirkhope and her housekeeper, and then the riot at the football stadium last night. Nearly 600 people dead. Hundreds electrocuted, floodlight wiring torn loose and the current directed into the rain-soaked crowd. Hundreds of others beaten, kicked to death by the mob. The rest, mass suicide. Any way they could find. Climbing then leaping from the floodlight towers or the girders supporting the covered stand area or hanging themselves with their club scarves, belt buckles, metal combs, other concealed weapons that troublemakers always managed to smuggle in. Anything that was sharp used to sever arteries. There had been a record gate for a midweek match in the small second division ground, 28,000. Nearly 600 dead. What kind of nightmare must it have been inside that darkened stadium? Bishop was unable to control the shudder that ran through him. The beer spilled onto his chin when he raised the can again and he realised his hand was shaking. 
Others had run into the streets. Most to escape the bedlam, many seeking alternative means of destroying themselves. Hands had been smashed through shop front windows, the jagged shards used to slash wrists. Twenty youths had run onto the nearby railway station and jumped as one from the platform when an express hurtled through. The nearby canal was still being dredged for the bodies of those who had chosen drowning. Tall buildings had been used to leap from, lorries or buses to leap under, cars as weapons. The destruction had gone on through the night. And then Peck thinks, uh, he didn't personally know of any woman living alone who wasn't afraid of the dark. Plenty of men too, although they wouldn't admit it. I will happily admit that I'm afraid of the dark, although it's not really the darkness. It's the, the thought of people coming after me in the darkness. And again, the evil continues, so here we have. There had been many smaller incidents, and if anything, some of these were even more disquieting than the major events. Perhaps it was because they had involved perfectly normal people, at least considered to be normal before they had committed their individual acts of madness. A man had slaughtered every animal in the pet shop he owned, afterwards taken to his bed with the one fortunate creature he had spared, the showpiece of his collection, a ten foot long South American boa constrictor. He had been found dead with a snake wrapped around his throat like a muffler. Three nuns had gone berserk in their convent, creeping through the corridors one night and attempting to smother several sleeping sisters with pillows. They had succeeded twice before they were discovered. A doctor on night duty, the inquiry discovered he had worked non-stop for two days and nights, had toured the wards of his hospital injecting patients with a lethal dose of insulin. Only the intervention of a duty nurse had prevented more than a dozen deaths. She herself had been injected and killed when she had struggled with a doctor. A labourer working late to finish an urgent job on a block of offices that was undergoing modernisation had knocked his foreman semi-conscious, then pinned him to the wall with a nail gun. The gun individually shot six inch nails with a force strong enough to pierce concrete and by the time the other workman got to the unfortunate foreman, his arms and legs were firmly pinned. The crazed workman managed to fire a nail through his own head before they could get to him and another labourer had narrowly missed being punctured when the nail had emerged from the other side without losing any impetus. Perhaps the most bizarre of all was the butcher who had served his chopped up wife to his customers, today's special, regular customers only. A section of thigh was still missing, and the police were desperately trying to trace the unlucky housewife who had made the bargain purchase. We get somebody says uh, bib him, which he means to like beep the car horn. Um, my mum says bib as well, I noticed it when I saw her this, this weekend. She was like, oh, I'm just going to bib that car. And then we get this line, um, he suddenly understood that the dark could only claim those who allowed themselves to be claimed. The dark had to be accepted before it could take, like the mythical vampire who could not cross a threshold unless invited. And we get um, this line as well, uh, veterans of the wartime blitz thought it ironic that now it was unlawful not to show a light at night time, whereas in the war years it had been a punishable offence to do so. And we get this great little bit of gore and viscera here, it says, uh, the glass spun in the air, the shards flashing redly as they turned and reflected the distant fire, huge sheets specially strengthened to protect the delicate but powerful filaments beneath them. He saw a piece flying towards Edith, its glistening surface the size of a door, saw it slice her body in half and closed his eyes before her legs, standing on their own, slowly toppled over. So yeah, all in all, horrifying novel but very nicely written. It's got a lot in common with uh, The Fog, so if you've read that, um, also by James Herbert, if you've read and enjoyed that you'll like this, even though as I say they're both very similar, even kind of down to the denouement at the end as well. Um, I did feel as though it lost a little bit of steam towards the last 50 to 70 odd pages, but uh, overall still very well done, uh, very gripping story. I think actually probably the midpoint was the strongest point of it. Uh, I wrote in my uh, Goodreads review, basically it kept on ramping up the stakes until it felt as though it had reached a pinnacle, you know, after which point it didn't really have anywhere else to go, so it kind of struggled with the end, but uh, overall still did enjoy it, would give it a 4 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Dark by James Herbert. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye